In this video, we will continue working on our project related to real-time notifications in Django using Django channels and Django REST framework and React.js on the front end. And we will implement JSON Web Token authentication. And we will also discuss the differences between JSON Web Token authentication and the built-in to Django REST framework token authentication. So without further ado, let's get started. So JSON Web Token Authentication and the built-in token authentication that comes with Django REST framework are different ways to authenticate users using tokens. The main difference between these two is how they generate and store the tokens. So with built-in token authentication in Django REST framework, the server generates and stores the tokens in the database after adding the ALF token to the installed apps list and then running the migrations. The token itself is just a random string of characters. It is associated with a user and this token doesn't change unless um, we write our own logic to change these tokens according to some rules in some defined period of time. And then on the other hand, with JSON Web Token Authentication, the server generates a token that contains all the information needed for authentication and signs it with a secret key, which is known only by the server. And to be more precise, it takes the header and the payload, it combines them into a single string separated by a period, and then it signs this combined string using the secret key and the chosen algorithm. So if the credentials are correct, the user will receive this access token, which will be included in the future requests. And then the server will verify the signature to ensure that the token is valid. And once expiration time of the access token has passed, the token will no longer be accepted by the server. So apart from the access token, we get a refresh token, which is used to renew the expired uh, JSON web token. And we will see how this works in practice probably in the next video where we are going to integrate our backend and frontend. And to sum up this short introduction, JSON Web Token authentication is generally considered more secure and scalable. However, um, the built-in built token authentication may be simpler for some smaller applications. So it really depends on what we are building. For this project, we are going to use the JSON Web Token Authentication. However, let's walk through the steps necessary to be taken in order to use the built-in Django REST Framework Token Authentication. So first of all, we need to add auth token to the installed apps list. And then we also need to define the default authentication classes in the REST Framework uh, section and set it to token authentication. Then we need to run the migrations. After running the migrations, we will have the tokens table. We will have this auth token section, and then we can simply go inside and associate a user to a particular token that will be generated. So I'm going to select my user. I'm going to press save. And now we have a token generated for a particular user. And usually this step would be automated. So we would use signals and to be more precise, a post save signal so that whenever a user gets created, the token will be automatically generated for this particular user. Then if we go back to the uh, Visual Studio code, let's access the URLs py file. We need to import obtain auth token from REST framework auth token views, and then define a path with this particular view. So we will send the credentials to this particular endpoint. And if everything is okay, in return, we will receive the token. So now let's add JSON Web Token Authentication to our actual project. For this, I will be using simple JWT and I'm going to head over to the installation. I'm going to grab this comment, go to the terminal and then run it. Okay, then I'm going to run the server, Python manage py run server. But of course we are not done yet with the configuration. As the next step, I'm going to bring in the uh, JWT authentication class to the default authentication classes. All right. I'm going to then go back. And before we take care of the URLs, 
I'm going to go to the settings and over here you have a lot of configuration options for the simple JWT. But what I'm going to do is to use only the first two. So I'm going to bring in time delta as well. And then maybe somewhere over here, I'm going to define simple JWT. I need to add a curly bracelet at the end. And then I'm going to use at the very beginning only one minute and then for the refresh token lifetime i will uh, use one day of course this will be changed a little bit later it's just a setting for now all right i'm going to save the settings py file and then i'm going to head back to the installation section to uh, do some work in the url patterns so we need to add two endpoints the first one is going to be for obtaining the access token and the refresh token and the other one is going to be to simply renew the expired access token for a new one so let's bring in maybe first of all the imports i'm going to head over the urls py and over here i'm going to paste the token obtained pair view and token refresh view and then i'm just going to copy those paths and paste them uh, below the API or maybe up below the API uh, for our post API URLs, okay? Perfect. Let's save this. And as the next step, we will be using Postman to test those API routes. So we will be testing mainly obtaining the token. And then with this token, we will try to access our posts. As the next step, I will be using Postman Desktop to test our API endpoints before we actually move on and integrate our backend and frontend. So the first thing that I did is to create a new workspace, and then I'm going to press on the plus, and here we will have a post request. We need to enter our URL, so it's going to be API token in order to obtain the access token and the refresh token. All right. And then I'm going to head over to the body and then I'm going to press row and I'm going to type in the username, username. And this is going to be Koshmakinya and then the password. All right, and now I'm going to press send. And we have unsupported media type text plane in the request. And we need to go to headers and specify the content type, content type to application JSON. Application JSON. All right, now this should work. And we have the refresh and the access token perfect so this uh, access token is valid only for one minute and the refresh token is valid for one day now that over one minute for sure has passed our access token shouldn't be valid i'm going to try to get all the posts with this access token that we have over here so i'm going to add a new request I'm going to change the token to posts and then I'm going to go to authorization, select uh, J uh, Beaver token over here. And then we need to paste in this token. So I'm going to grab the access token and I'm going to paste it over here and I'm going to press send. And we have given token not valid for any token type. So what we need to do is to run this request one more time. Let's grab the access token. And then let's uh, paste this new access token. And let's try this one more time. And here we have our posts. All right.
A different, more convenient option to obtain a new access token is to use the refresh token. So what I'm going to do is to add over here refresh, or I'm going to add a new request. Copy this one. This is going to be post. And then at the end, we will have refresh. All right. And what we need to do is to go to the body and let's select row. Here, let's add the refresh key like this. And we will now assign to this refresh key the refresh token. Let's copy it, paste it, and let's send it. And we have again unsupported media type text plane. And again, we need to go to the headers and then content type set to application JSON. Now let's send it and we have a new access token. In the next video, we will integrate our front end and maybe at least we will start to work on the authentication so that we can actually log into our app using JWT authentication with Django REST framework.